We have a, a fair number of pieces with each new boat that we deliver, and in, in order to make it a little bit easier to sort things out and to, to get the boat together, we're going to, uh, to show you how, how the boat is rigged. We start with the small pieces. Uh, the, there really aren't that many of them. Uh, this is the front mast support that carries the mast while the boat's on the trailer. And this is the rear mast support that sits in the rudder fittings and carries the mast the back aft while the mast is on the, uh, the boat is on the trailer and you're taking it down the road. These are safety lines that we use to help secure the mast as well as the, the rubber snubbers securing the mast at each end. We have, with each boat, uh, for when you start sailing the boat, we've got a bailing scoop to take out any uh, rainwater that might fall into the boat, three winch handles for operating the halyard winch, a drain plug that goes in the stern, a can of oil to lubricate the winch and the centerboard hoist and the trailer, any other moving parts that you find on the boat. Okay, the bag of small parts includes a drain plug, a shackle, some safety keepers, some clevis pins for the forestay and for the shroud, and some carter keys. We've also got the jib sheet, a main sheet that's complete with the blocks for trimming the main, the safety line that goes on the transom, the outhaul line, and a bow line for securing the, bow to the, the boat to the dock. When you're ready to begin rigging your flying Scott, the first thing that you need to do is disconnect the tie-down snubber and safety lines from the mast. Generally unhook the one in the front first and then the one in the rear. You will also need to untie the shrouds from the tie-down bar. We generally leave the tie-down bar on the boat while we are rigging it. It helps to stabilize the boat while it's on the trailer. Once you have the shrouds undone, you attach the chain plate adjuster to the chain plate. Most boats are set up so that the bottom hole in the adjuster goes to the bottom hole in the chain plate. Notice that the hook on the adjusters faces out. The clevis pin goes towards the inside with the keeper pin on the inside. Before you raise the mast, you may need to attach a masthead fly to the head of the mast. Or if the boat is rigged with a spinnaker, you'll have to attach a spinnaker halyard to the pad eye on the front of the mast just above the shrouds. Sometimes a turning block is also used here. You may also need to put the topping lift line for the spinnaker pole to the pad eye just above the track for the spinnaker pole. When you're ready to put the mast up, you release the jib halyard at the winch, disconnect it from the mast, and then pull on the halyard until the wire is totally unwound from the spool in the winch. You'll then slide the mast back and insert the mast hinge into the base of the mast. If someone is helping you to raise the mast, they can pull on the jib halyard. Be sure that the person helping does not wrap the halyard around their hand. This could cause an injury if the mast were to slip. Make sure that the shrouds are clear, nothing is caught, and then lift the mast and walk it up to the vertical position.
The jib halyard should then be secured to the bow handle. The jib halyard should then be tightened so that the mast is pulled forward. This will allow the forestay to be attached to its tail at the bow easily. When you attach the forestay, be certain that one of the forked fittings is completely inside of the other forked fitting. This ensures that the clevis pin for the forestay is loaded evenly. Once the clevis pin is through, it is secured with a small carter pin. Spread the legs of the carter pin so that they'll parallel the forestay. And then remember to tape the forestay so that this carter pin cannot be snagged by a sheet or line and inadvertently pulled out. The keeper for the shroud should also be rotated so that the sharp part of the keeper is hidden in the chain plate adjuster and then it should be taped as well. The jib halyard can then be removed from the bow handle and attached to the jib tack shackle The halyard can then be tightened so that the toggle below the foredeck is level. This tightens the forestay, pulls the mast forward, and snugs up the rig. The seat position is used when you want to steer the boat using the uh, tiller. Your tiller can swing full past the boom crotch. The most common position is the deck position that goes down in the center line of the boat and engages a socket in the floor. Slide the boom forward then. Set it into the crotch. And slip it onto the mast. with a, uh, a spring-loaded pin that slips down and engages the hole, it snaps into place. The out hole is rigged through this lock at the end of the boom. It goes through the sail, if this is the sail, and you come back into this hole and tie a figure eight knot. When the sail isn't on the boom, I generally just run it through here and leave the outhaul on the boom all the time. Comes forward on the port side of the boom. Goes through a little turning block. And then it uh, slips through this cleat. You pull up on it, it cleats it, and to release it, you pull down. And rather than have this line dangle down into the cockpit, I just tie a very simple slip knot and slide it aft so that the whole line stays up out of the cockpit. 